Okay, hi everybody. Um, I just wanted to put a bit more information in on uh, on part two. Um, the video in part one, if you haven't seen it, please go back and watch it. it it's, it's really um, critical to be able to catch up on, on where we are. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> the flux cutting law, flux linking law, uh, if you read George I. Cowan, he does say that quite often they can both happen at the same time and um, it's very hard to prove that. I haven't been able to prove it but I've been able to suspect it several times. Anyway, back to the rotor. You can see a south pole on that particular magnet. You can see a north pole on that particular magnet. The the, the magnets themselves, they're not very, very big. The distance, um, as I was sort of saying, uh, of the magnets that's actually doing the cutting on the coils is not very big at all. Um, <clears throat> you can see over there the distance from there down to the bottom there uh, and then it loops over. The, the distance from, from there to there is the distance that's being cut. Um, the distance uh, that's being cut is L, so that's the BVL. <clears throat> and the magnets essentially have to move at right angles to the conductor. Um, so when I say cutting, the cutting angle is, is at right angles to the conductor. Um, you can see that it's the same all the way around. So the coil is, is sort of um, a U-shape. It's not actually a loop. There's, there's no loops of wire. Um, in there as such it's it's a big loop all the way around but it's all a bunch of u-shapes so it's not a loop as such at all anyway <clears throat> um, i'm going to go through a little bit more um, we're going to look into lens law and a few other bits and pieces uh, so i'll be back i'll get the rotor back together okay um, you can see there i've marked the north and south pole that we were just looking at um, so the north pointing out this way, south coming back in that way. Um, as the magnets move with velocity v past the coil, like that, um, the EMF is generated and you can you can see via the Lorentz force, if a north pole is facing out that way and moving that way, then the, uh, the charge in the wire will be forced, which is F. So E is the electron in the wire, or the charge in the wire, E plus will be forced up this way. The south pole moving with velocity that way will move the charge in the wire, will force the charge in the wire down that way. Um, so you can see essentially how this, how this is starting to come together and essentially the further around it goes the more cutting that happens and the faster the cutting happens the larger the EMF on the scope. Okay, so you can see that the EMF is considered to be the open circuit voltage. Okay, something I want to go into just quickly. Um, so many people mystify energy generation, electrical energy generation. It's, it's mystified by so many people. Uh, it's pretty much voodoo science. You, you have to depend on your utility company to you know, run, run your computer, run your lights, run your electrical appliances. But yet, right here in front of us, we see a small generator that's capable of generating, I think this one's rated at, or was rated at 750 watts, I think, from memory. The problem with the generators is uh, Lens Law and the losses in them. So if I take this coil, or if I take this wire, and if I short, the generator you can see there's a drag there's a mechanical drag on the rotor it's quite hard to turn if I take the cord off it's easy to turn so the force the mechanical force onto the shaft versus the power out is almost a one-to-one -one ratio uh, in the really big generators there might be 1% losses, so they'll be 99% efficient, which means 99% of electrical energy will be available on the terminals of the generator. 1% of uh, energy will be lost in the form of heat, uh, that being friction, windage loss, all that sort of thing. 
um, and that total energy that is input will be shaft energy which will be mechanical energy to the shaft so Lenz law is the law to beat Lenz law is the law that restricts or, or is the friction if you like uh, of the generator and that's why we can't get machines to go over unity is because of Lenz law okay um, like I was saying before uh, Faraday's law of induction is, is not new we've known about induction for some hundred and nearly 200 years it's about 195 194 years or so uh, 1831 was when Michael Faraday discovered induction Joseph Henry uh, discovered induction separately in 1932 um, so induction is not new it's not mystical we know how it works there's two forms of it, it's been very well documented over the last nearly 200 years um, so many people out there paint it as a mystical, magical um, unknown force Whereas really the truth is that we really do know quite a bit about it. Not everything, but quite a bit. And like I say, Lenz Law is the law that restricts us. It's the, it's the law that um, ensures that everything falls back into equilibrium as quickly as possible. So we can spend as much energy we want turning the shaft, but the force um, restricting us from turning the shaft will be in the form of a magnetic force which is the charge, the current flowing in the wire because a magnetic field is the current flowing um, a current flowing constitutes a magnetic field there is no magnetic field unless the charge is flowing or moving um, and we know that to get the charge flowing we have to have uh, a circuit which is a closed circuit so essentially any current will flow through a load which depending on the load will have a resistance um, and the current flowing through that resistance will determine the magnetic field okay I just want to mention there's a few improvements that people can look at if they want to investigate in this sort of um, area uh, first thing is Ohm's law uh, determines the output um, so for example the faster the rotor spins the higher the voltage will go on the output and thus more current will be available the higher the voltage goes but um, the current is dependent on the resistance of the wire so the resistance of the wire will also depend um, will also determine I should say um, the output current so in most generators you'll see a fairly thick wire um, so the wire can handle the current um, so that's the first and biggest um, area your turns is obviously fairly important as well the more turns the more voltage will be available more voltage available generally not always but generally you'll see a higher current um, but it, again it does depend on the on the size of the wire and the speed of the rotor um, the other thing is the length the, we looked at the length of the magnets before um, the length of the magnets cutting the length of the wire which is the L in the BVL equation the, the, the longer the length being cut the greater the EMF um, generally it comes back to a, uh, a certain um, a certain magnetic field strength cutting the wire as well um, so your magnetic field strength the, the stronger the magnets are the more EMF will be generated um, you don't want your your area of your coils to be super big um, in one direction but very small in the other direction so you want to make sure that the area of your, your wire that's being cut relative to the area that's um, that's not being cut is not too big so you, you don't want to make this area or this length really long and this length over here really short um, this is for the flux cutting law the flux linking law is a little bit different flux linking is your CSA which is your cross-sectional area you want to make as big as possible um, again comes back to things like your wire size your current flow in your coils 
um, turns ratios, all that sort of thing. There's a lot to it, um, so it takes a fair bit of research to get your head around all this sort of thing. Um, also the velocity, the speed, which we've also covered, um, speed of the rotor. Um, uh, also the lens law, if, if, if lens law is thought about for long enough, um, like I've already said, it is a magnetic field. Lens law is a magnetic field. It's constituted by the flow of current and a wire. So as soon as you have a flow of current and a wire, you have a magnetic field. And as soon as the magnetic field builds, it creates um, restriction or friction on the time rate of change of the source magnetic field, which in this case is the rotor. Um, in a transformer, the source magnetic field would be the primary coil. So it's quite complex, a lot to it. Um, Lens law is the law to beat. If you can beat Lens law, then your um, your shaft efficiency will go down. Uh, sorry, your, your your input to your shaft, your shaft performance or shaft energy will go down, but your output will stay the same, um, depending on the speed of the rotor. Anyway, I'll get this video posted. Um, hopefully, it makes some sense. I have made a few verbal errors so please forgive me um, I'm trying to sort of think about this and explain it the best way I possibly can but sometimes I'm not getting words out properly so I do apologize please do your own research please verify what I've been saying um, there is tons of documentation out on the internet um, cross cross reference cross check um, verify as much as you can anyway good luck